Welcome to the closing keynote. That's how I like to call it. Sounds better than the last presentation on the last day. Thanks again, Stefan. Uh, <laughs> appreciate it. I love you. Uh, we're going to talk about defense, which is uh, very unsexy for a lot of us. And uh, I did find that you can make it a little, sorry, a little more interesting, so to speak. Uh, hence my next 45 or whatever minutes that I'm going to spend talking about it. This is me. I'm not certified to do anything um, pretty. Um, I do the business thing. I work for IOActive. I run their uh, EMEA services. Uh, hey, guys. <laughs> I'm a hacker, a researcher, a really, really secure programmer. Um, my stuff only works on this machine, so it's DRM protected and everything. Um, I do some research on uh, cybercrime, and <laughs> uh, which led me to do some research on on like how Big Brother is is messing with with all this. Uh, in the past, you can watch it on YouTube somewhere. Um, I run the local DefCon group, uh, very similar to here in Tel Aviv. I actually set it up uh, with with a buddy of mine almost two years ago. Um, Again, in a drunken rant, we started the PTES, which is uh, an awesome initiative to define what a proper penetration testing is supposed to do and be like, uh, both for the customers as well as for the service providers, uh, which they should pick up on a little faster because most, most of it sucks. And in the f spare time that I have from all of this, uh, I also do some reserve duty in the Israeli Air Force doing computer stuff. And we're obviously dirty sec, which is probably the, m the most important here on the, <laughs> on the slide. So how did I get to talk about defense? It's, it's a funny story because I'm, I'm historically, I'm mostly doing offensive shit. Um, so you had, you know, uh, you run into customers that had like a vuln assessment done, all right? And uh, maybe even a pen test is different than a vulnerability assessment. I hope that everyone understands that. And they feel great about it because they can check off all those compliance boxes, um, but it really doesn't give them anything in terms of uh, security, unfortunately. Uh, because if they look for compliance stuff, they get compliance, but they, by far they do not get security. And on several occasions, they actually had a red team engagement run with them. Um, and that kind of turned the whole thing around because they passed the pen test. But after the red team, it's like, <laughs> did you leave anything not broken? <laughs> it's like, um, and it, it, I, I get like a, a scale of emotions from customers that, that go through that first red, like proper red team, uh, which ranges from, it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> to, no, it's, you know, that was, that was, that's not ours. It's like, it's not my data, right? And it's, <laughs> it can't be, it can't be my server that's not responding. It's <laughs> because we have like 99.999 uptime, right? Uh, and then it's like, fuck, it's my server that's not responding. It's like, everything is down. You, did you realize what you just do? Uh, <laughs> uh, and then it's like, <sighs> nope, it was out of scope. It's, you know, it's, you do not play by the rules. This, you know, this this can't happen, right? It's it's not fair. Uh, and the last fa phase is like, wow, you know what? That was awesome. Now I understand where my gaps are between my current security posture and where I want to be in terms of risk management. And let's set a plan to solve it. And and obviously, I didn't find a picture of that person because. It, the, yeah, the rainbow pooping unicorn obscured it. <laughs> and having all this experience and having the understanding that people don't know how to really defend themselves uh, led me to look into what are we doing wrong in this as an industry, because obviously we're doing something wrong. No, I mean, no one passes, you know, a proper test on the first time. And I'm like, you know what, let's start with the current stack of reports that you have behind you, they're dusting, you know, gathering dust there of all those pen tests and vulnerability assessments. 
that obviously you did not read or, you know, because they're not worth anything. But let's try to find the information that's really useful from there. Because, you know, you, you got to get some credit to, to all those people that ran the Nessus and, and printed it. Um, some of that stuff is actually, you know, viable as, as, as a defensive posture. Uh, but in order to do that, we need to understand, like, set up some ground rules. All right, let's start with the basics. We need to define terminology. You cannot avoid it, otherwise you're not going to get the budget and people are going to just yeah, go away. So we're going to talk about five minutes, all right, and then we're going to go to the sexy stuff about vulnerability, exposure, threat, and risk, really quickly. Uh, you can find this on Wikipedia. Uh, a vulnerability is a vulnerability, all right? It's a gap, it's, it's a problem. It's usually related to software, but if you look really deeply into it, uh, you'll find the interesting stuff here in logic and operational issues, processes, procedures related to the business. Okay, that's a vulnerability. Okay, a cross-site scripting on some obscure, I don't give a fuck, web server is not a vulnerability if I don't care about it as a business. Okay, I'll just ignore. Uh, but if something can break my business process and impact my business, it's a vulnerability. Now I need to find how it's actually defined to deal with it. Exposure. It's like, didn't we just talk about vulnerability? No, exposure. A vulnerability can exist, and it can exist in kind of a void if it doesn't get exposed to a threat actor, to someone who's actually like, I'm going to break your business. Uh, if he can't get, if he can't see it, it's not exposed. So you need to understand how your vulnerabilities fit into a threat model with your business, your adversaries, uh, and what kind of interactions they have between themselves. We talked about adversaries. Threat is critical to define. You cannot just defend yourself from everything. The bad hackers, right? Anonymous. I love how it's like always. Like we need to build a threat model for anonymous. Sure. <laughs> um, I like to usually define a threat by its capabilities and accessibility to assets. All right, this is like the bare minimum. You can go deeper and, and break it down to, to more granular components, but this is like the basic stuff. Uh, you either define a threat community if you cannot pinpoint a specific agent, or you define threat agents. Right? We are threat agents. I'm a threat agent. <laughs> um, you can define specific employees that are potential threat agents. All right? Anonymous are a threat community. The China is a threat community. <laughs> uh, but I usually like to narrow it down to something a little more manageable. Which leads us to risk. Risk, I'll tell you a little secret, um, is a mathematical thing. Right, for lack of, I'm, I'm not a trained like mathematician or whatever, so it's a thing. Uh, but it, it's something that can and should be expressed in a repeatable, defensible manner. Right? Uh, think of it as an equation. Uh, the classic ones are probability, well, I like to just, probability of something bad happening, but it's a probability. Okay? It's a number of some sort that you need to deal with uh, and measure over time so you can say, you know what, my risk has been reduced because I'm doing things correctly. Or my risk stays the same because I'm still buying shit and, you know, I have blinky lights, but pff, I don't know what's going on. Um, so it's, it's important to be able to measure repeatedly and track it over time. Done with the terminology. Relax. Uh, let's talk about methodology. So we've seen that there's a problem. All right, businesses are fragile, they're, they're brittle, they're not ever fragile, they break easily, um, mostly because humans are involved. If you ask a good like network security engineer, can you build me the most secure network on, on Earth? He's like, yes, as long as you keep the humans out of it. It's like, <laughs> first user on the system, pff, everything's broken. Um, but the problem is that we've been doing defense the same way for a very, very, very long time. Uh, it might have worked back then. Um, and this is, this is the defender view. Uh, and it still is the defender view. Even these days, we, we are very good in building walls and, and buying products and putting stuff between us and our threats. 
that no more than they, they just make us feel better because I have a big wall and I have like a little slit that I can look and shoot arrows at wherever's coming. But the problem is th those walls are obscuring our view of who the hell's out there to attack me. Because if they're coming from like there or there, I'm just seeing this. So think of your firewalls and antiviruses and IPSs and IDSs as these walls because all you're looking at is what's coming through this little slit. You're missing out on the whole picture and you're limiting yourself, we are limiting ourselves, to only dealing with the problems that are well-defined and was like, oh, there we go, here's a virus I detected. Oh, by the way, uh, I just detected it now, but it's been out there for like six months on your network. So, sorry. <laughs> uh, so by definition, we're doing defense really, really badly. Now, if we take a look at the flip side, the attacker view, a little better, all right? I can sit here and scope this place, you know, the, the, the little castle I want to store into, and figure out, you know, who's working there, what are the shifts of the guards, when they go out to the bar and get shit-faced after eight-hour shifts or whatever it is, and see what's going on in the business processes and the supply chain, and this is what we do as attackers, all right? We look at this, you know, remotely. No one even notices us there. I'm, like, hiding in, in the woods here. And I know everything about the place I'm going to attack before they even realize something's happening, all right? And once I attack, they're like, what just happened here? <clears throat> this is what we do as attackers. Again, I've, I've shamelessly stolen this from, from the penetration testing execution standard. Uh, it's basically what we do. We start with intel gathering, move on to vulnerability research. Up until this stage, zero interaction with the target, right? I can do all of that in my home lab, buy products or steal them or what, whatever it is, research, see exactly how they work, uh, and then, exploit. When I'm exploiting, I know exactly what's going to happen because I've, I did this in the lab and I know the processes, I know the business, I know who's reacting to what, I know how they do IR and, and, and whatever it is, take control, establish the command control infrastructure, and then just do whatever I want. Steal the data, ruin the organization, shut down the power, whatever it is that, that makes me happy that particular day. Now, when I'm looking at it, at it from a defender's view, we're really good at this way, way, way too late into the process. We're not even detecting it during the exploitation. We're usually detecting it like, oh yeah, you're fucked. <laughs> Blink light. Uh, and we're, some of us are really good at this, at like, you know, forensics and, and learning from how we got hacked so I can put it in like a document and say this will never happen again. And it won't because I'm up to a new thing now, <laughs> right? And it really doesn't. Uh, and companies make a lot of money by, by just doing this, this thing. Uh, I call it ambulance chasing. It's like you got hacked. I can do phenomenal incident response and, and like look up your, you know, all of your faults and, and help you fix them maybe. Um, but it doesn't really help you as a defender to, to fend off the next attack. And this is what we're missing as defenders, again. The whole threat modeling, understanding what the hell am I trying to protect here? Intel gathering on myself. How, d how am I perceived from the outside by this community and that community? All right? Intel gathering on my threat communities that I know now because I have a threat model. All right? What are their, their capabilities? really research them and learn them so I can adapt and tune my defenses and be ready for them. And data correlation. This is what, you know, all the fancy RSA talks uh, about big data are, are trying to, to deal with. Um, we, we're getting better there, but it's, it's not, it's not, we're not there yet. We can't just throw all sorts of different data to a big magic machine that will spit out like, this is what you need to do. We're getting there. And again, a few tips as, as a defender. It's not about egos. There's, you know, Christian had a, had a great slide on his opening keynote <laughs> um, about hiring rock stars. Especially in defense, no point. Absolutely no point. Get the juniors, teach them properly, have them run through a 
coherent process, you'll get way better defense than some rock star sitting there and like, I'm going to tear this binary to, to pieces and then understand exactly what it did here to the organization. Great. Um, so it's not about just egos and people and skills. It's about a business. Okay. Uh, we're not operating in a technical only environment. People are leaving. Good. <laughs> Go away. This is not a technical problem. All right. This is not a technology issue that we can fix with a software or an appliance or a server. This is a risk problem that a business needs to deal with and we can help. All right. We're part of the solution. We're not all of it. It's not fair. An attacker will always have more information. All right. The attacker usually have the initiative. They choose when to attack us. All right, so forget about fairness, forget about scope and rules, all right, because they're not going to play by the rules that you're trying to, you know, force yourself to play with. Um, it's about having mindsets of improvement. Of, and this is tough. This is basically understanding we're always going to be a step behind, or not, not really a step behind, but we're always going to have gaps. And it's always going to be about closing those gaps. And those gaps can be, you know, in technology, right? But they can also be in processes and people and, and understanding and com company culture. Um, but you need to identify them in order to realize what the gap is and then close it in the context of the risk. Again, don't just go patching servers left and right because there's a new vuln in Apache and you have like five of them on some internal segment that no one gives a shit about. Right? It's not just a technology issue, it's just understanding what's the risk context. So let's go through some of the, the methodology again in, in details. We start by mapping. And yes, Chris, you use the same thing. I know. Okay. We really suck at mapping. All right? We've, you know, it, it's 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 an art that's been developed for years, and it's still we're we're still kind of getting there. But when we're talking about mapping threat as a business, <coughs> we're not there yet. Okay. Mapping is difficult. You need to identify what the business is doing. All right? You could be working as a system security engineer in one company, and someone else is going to have the same job title in another company. It's completely different jobs because you're protecting different businesses. First of all, understand what the business is doing, how it's making money. Tough questions, right, for, for security hackers. It's like, what? Give me, give me a shell. Give me a web app. I'll no, it's bullshit. Understand who are you working for? Who's paying your paycheck? How do they do that? Unbelievable that they keep paying us, I know. <sighs> How do they do that? How do they make money? Understand that process, because that's what you need to protect. Otherwise, no paycheck for you. Understand what are the processes, the assets, the people that are involved in this making money thing for that business. And then, Figure out, all right, so there's some technology thrown around here. Eh, I, I, I can feel good with that because I'm, I know technology. Third parties, all right? We offshore a lot of stuff. We outsource a lot of stuff. How does that fit into our model? Um, and then map the security elements that we have and intelligence elements on top of that. And now you can start mapping the actual exposures, all right, and issues and vulnerabilities that we talked about before. Um, there is no, you know, this is the Bible of mapping and threat modeling, all right? It can come in any shape or form. It can be a document, it can be a video, it can be a whiteboard session, all right? That, that you sit down with, with a few execs and, and a few business line owners and, and project managers and whatever it is and talk about things. How do you make money? How do you, we ship products? How do we provide services? Where is the information? Who's dealing with that? and map it out so I can understand how this, this whole thing works. And you can break it down. You can even take a you know, huge company like GE or Boeing. They're usually like, ah, pff, yeah, we can't do that. We have hundreds of business lines and products. I'm like, okay, so break it down. Take the hundred and sit with them one by one and you'll have small mini maps and then go to the executives and ask them, so how does this business relate to this business? So, so it's, it's just a, it's math. Again, it's breaking down, it's kind of a divide and conquer, understand how, how things are connected. It's doable, 
right? I love it when you go to like a multi-billion dollar organization. Oh, pff, yeah, you can't do that. You're going to have to set up like hundreds of interviews. I'm like, okay, <laughs> here's my calendar. <laughs> here's my people. Here's your people. Let's make them, <laughs> let's start. Because if you don't start, you're never going to finish. Um, and once you have a map, you can, you can figure out, all right, so th this is like the process. There, I've got some inputs here. This is some technology I have here, and you know, that's connecting us to, to someone else. Uh, there's a vulnerability here in this data, all right? There's an issue with this third party or human that's feeding data, and it's, it's a problem. I, did, I identified it, all right? Uh, this input is a critical asset. I identify it, so I know I need to protect it. This person is a critical asset because it's, he's part of this process that makes money magically. Identify all of those processes, people, technology, in order to be able to say, oh, you know what, I'm going to focus on this and this and this when I'm trying to figure out you know, how to protect this process that makes me money. Instead of just, let's install AVs all over the place and firewalls and IDSs and blinking lights and, and lots of dollars. Useless. Useless. And then map the threats. Again, we already talked about this. Who am I up against? Who are my adversaries? Could be partners, could be business rivals, could be China. Who is it? Ask the people who run the business, they'll be able to tell you. That's their job. <laughs> All right? They're not managing some firewall, they're managing risk for the business. And risk comes from external or internal elements that may fuck up the business. Ask them, they know it, map it out so you can understand and do some research on their capabilities. How do they affect me? Is the cleaning lady a Metasploit expert? Probably not, right? <laughs> okay, so that, that's, that's, that's a threat capability that I can map into my risk analysis, right? What do they know? What's their MO? Cleaning lady can plug in this, this big ass, it's not here, USB thing and just infect machine by machine because someone told her, right? That's her capability, that's her MO. Uh, China, this data ship, Products with backdoors, that's their MO, whatever it is. Identify it so you can react to it, so you can respond to it. And you have all of that data in human form, in brain dumps, in logs that you're collecting or not collecting. Collect everything, document everything, find the processes to get all that information so you can process it later. And, and it's about measure twice and cut once. Don't filter logs just because they take up space. Space is cheap, right? Big data requires big storage. Pfft, funny, I know. Pieces of information that you think now that are irrelevant, once you have something going on, an incident, or, or some kind of threat forming up, may be crucial to your understanding of how do I deal with this, because things correlate, and not just in a given point of time, they correlate over time, right? And it's important to collect all those pieces of data over time and, and figure out a way how they create a story. Get intelligence from everywhere. Your marketing guys, your sales guys, your business, business guys are outward facing. That's a huge advantage. Talk to them and try to get information on, again, the threat landscape. Who's out there to get us? What are our plans? Right? Who are we talking to? What are people asking you? Right? This is the kind of information that you need because now you know that people are asking about our next product line, which is still secret or never going to come out because we can't develop it or whatever it is. Look at your competitors. What are they doing? Talk to them. You'll be surprised to find that there are a lot of channels that you can create on the risk side uh, and I just came back from, from like three days in London uh, visiting uh, a nice like industry organization called ORX, Operational Risk Exchange. If anyone here is working for the financial sector, you might know about it. This, these are people from competing banks, right? all the risk managers that have this platform that they share risk information. This is phenomenal. Right? We're doing that on the you know, AV industry. Vendors will, will tear one each other on, on a sales engagement 
while the researchers are collaborating and sharing samples and information and analysis, find a way to talk to your competitors. It's valuable information. It's phenomenal. Customers, partners, analysts, all right, talk to people who kind of try to understand your, your market. Search, market news, everything is relevant. All right? Even, you know, just events around the world or local you'll often see that there's a correlation between the kinds of attacks that you need to deal with or incidents that you need to deal with with what's going on, all right? Sports events usually lead to spamming of like, oh, check out this NCAA whatever, this football, soccer, baseball, someone blowing someone else and, and marrying his girlfriend or whatever it is. People will click that. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> look for <laughs> look for early warning sign again it's the kind of information that you have but you need to be able to identify all right and not just ignore or react to the symptoms all right you need to figure out what it means if there's a you know if the call volume to the IT support center is is rising all right if PCs are behaving weirdly if if there's construction going on across the street that is not supposed to happen all right, is someone actually like digging up my, my communication lines? Or is it really like, you know, the city needs to fix a, a hole in the, in the ground? Or ask, figure out what's, what's weird. Remember when I told you this is our biggest problem, security-wise? There is no fix for, for this thing, but there are processes where we can minimize the damage, <laughs> okay? If people realize what this means and how this can be used as an attack vector, they'll be a little more aware about this. Smokers are bad. Smoking will kill you. <laughs> uh, they'll be aware of those kind of things that, that happen and at least be able to say, hey, dude, it might seem stupid, but I just, you know, someone's tailgating or, or you know, this, this Dude hanging out in, you know, in, in the smoker's area, his badge looks funny, or he doesn't have a badge. I don't know. Right? Might be something that will actually help you deal with, with people like me. And then correlate. This is, this is the hard part. <laughs> correlate everything, all the things, all the raw logs that we talked about before, right? all the information that we gathered from the business, from our marketing guys, from, from, from the product managers and, and the business line owners, all the news that are going on, regional, sports, entertainment, financial, industry related, correlate everything all the time, over time. Try to find the stories, try to find the trends, right, that speak to your threat model, that connect to your threat model to identify if things are gonna happen, right? And instead of just sitting there and waiting for the blinking light to tell you that you've been owned for six months, Try to, to be a little more proactive about it and, and kind of do something before it actually happens. And then once you get all that homework done, and this is hard work, this is not easy, uh, then you can start defending yourself, right? Train the people to identify, report, and react to those basic elements that we talked about. Not just react to breaches, but react to signs of shit's going to happen, all right? Some, something is in the air, all right? It, it's, we're going to get attacked, or, or someone's poking my, my external servers, he's looking for information because they want to try to do something. And get the technology last, not first, right? Don't just start buying shit. It's just, just hold off that Amex. It's, it'll be fine. I'll give you a chance to buy good stuff. Do the homework first, and then figure out where, what do you need to protect the assets that we talked about. Most importantly, have a clear picture of where we're at, right? Remember those gaps I talked about, the, this you know, mentality of constant development? You have to map out, all right, I'm here, I need to be here, all right? And I need to assess myself to see exactly what those gaps are. So either get someone to do the testing for you, do it yourself, whatever it is, get the unicorns to, to send you a report, but get a decent evaluation of where you're at 
so you can measure it over time. No, I'm not trying to sell pen testing here. I'm trying to sell understanding. And again, yes, lying to yourself isn't going to make you feel better. Well, maybe, you know, it's like, yeah, I'm protected. That's awesome. And then you wake up tomorrow and everything's broken. So not going to help. Talked about this constant development. Look for changes. Never. This, this is critical, right? Take a picture of this slide. <laughs> Never sign off on a strategy document. On like a, this is our defensive security defensive strategy document. Pfft, bullshit. Five minutes later, it's irrelevant. Have a framework that you can work with, right? That's adaptable because your business changes. Because tomorrow we're we're having a new business line with like shitloads of third parties coming in and talking to us, and we're buying libraries from from some. Chinese software developer and, and you know, the, the, I have a, a, a dev shop in India that's integrating all those libraries into our code. It's like, whoa, where does that fit in our security strategy? It doesn't. <laughs> okay? Never sign off of something that, that is never going to stay stable. All right? And remember, we're here to support the business. We're not here to, to buy fancy gadgets and, and to, to have, like, fancy screens with threats on them and, and AV and, and firewall stuff going on. Align well, outwards. Once you get the basics done and you have a strategy or a framework for a strategy and you start doing stuff, share it or at least see what others are doing, if they're doing it right, obviously. Even if they don't, learn from their mistakes. Keep track of what's going on outside. Again, this is your research on your adversaries. What do they know? What's new and out there? Is it relevant to me or not? Audits are great to keep the lawyers off your ass. That's it. Okay? It has nothing to do with security. Again, I'm not a CSSP, so I can't compare and like, give you all the pillars shit and, and say, oh. But yeah, it's, it's got nothing to do with security. It's cool. It's fancy. You, you'll get the auditors, the, 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 the accountants, and the lawyers off your ass. Here's check. If you are compliant, that's again, that's great to keep the law. There's a risk, you know, in terms of legal and regulatory and whatever it is. Um, you can solve that, and that's great if you're if you're compliant. But if you're just compliant, it's usually not helping, because now you have proven to yourself and announced to the rest of the world that you are as good as the lowest common denominator in your industry. Yay, mediocrity. <laughs> and you are doing exactly what everyone else is doing as a, as a bare minimum. Okay, so everyone knows that this is your, these are your measures. Okay, so now I can exploit it. <laughs> now I can bypass it because you've got nothing else. And again, it's not about technology or skill or people. It's really about this, this cat herding kind of drill that we're doing and, and trying to figure out how do they all mix together in this business that I'm trying to have everyone like work together and be, be happy. At that point, if you follow this and, and you kind of are like, okay, it makes kind, kind of makes sense and you're kind of a douche, idiot, whatever, speaking here, but I, I can dig some of that stuff. Um, then you can get to the more interesting stuff. And this is where it gets really sexy. And when I talked about intel gathering, you can go out there and really get some information on your adversaries. Information that is super relevant to how you do things defensively and stop the attacks from happening before they actually happen. Crazy, right? But it's actually working. <laughs> um, the, the secret, it's your information. You own it. You own it. This is your playing field, and you're just standing here like, I'm good. Hit me. No, this, you own this. You know what's going on, all right? You can set traps and, and, and get information from all around the place that's actually relevant. You're not just going to sit, sit here like, I'm going to close my eyes and, and brace. This is what we're doing. If I see you running at me with a baseball bat, I'm like, 
I think I can deal with that. I can either run the fuck out <laughs> or shoot you, <laughs> all right? <laughs> or get a stick and, and get ready to fight. It's, it's pointless to just sit there and like, eh, I'll be fine, <laughs> all right? This is, this is the way of thinking that, that I'm trying to, to set here. Um, set traps, intelligence traps, technology traps. We'll talk about it and see how that works. And, and you can actually booby trap shit. Like when people that are attacking you are gonna use things to attack you, let them blow it, you know, blow it in their faces and, and see, <laughs> look at that. That's cool, that, that, that's awesome. Um, not a lawyer. So get proper legal advice because this shit can get really, really scary really fast. Um, but get a good lawyer. Not the kind of that, that goes, oh, pff, no, you can't do that. But the kind that goes, no, you can't do that here, but set up this company over there and they hire someone else. And the, the, I mean, I don't know what this is, what's happening, but you know, someone just tripped on something and broke his face. He was after you, but pff, you just tripped. I don't know what happened. Uh, yeah, get those kind of lawyers. A couple of examples to kind of see how that works in, in real life. And again, this, this actually works. This is not me just standing here telling stories. Um, so first example, uh, this is kind of the scenario. We identified threat agents, all right, or threat communities. And, and we, we saw where their, their hangouts were, all right? So where they get the tools, where they get the information, where they're like practicing and, and developing offensive stuff, because we, we all do and we know how that works. And uh, we got into that group, um, and in this specific case, it was a forum, and started manipulating stuff, for, for lack of better technical terms. Uh, we backdoored it, so we'll know if someone is using something, we'll kind of like, oh, okay, <laughs> good to know. And make sure it leaves a distinct signature, so when something does happen and, and is sent to us, I'm gonna be like, oh, I know that. <laughs> I know where that came from. <laughs> I know what's what that's going to do, all right? I know who's using it, where he got it from. I'm cool, right? This is this is proper defense, not like you'll be known. Um, and again, update custom signatures, kick back, watch the fun. So here's here's the deal. Uh, this is the forum that they're hanging out with, um, cool hacker forum, uh, and someone was publishing a new rat. Okay, it's called NG Rad version 022, whatever it is, blah, blah, blah. Works on all, all kinds of stuff, does things, processes, 100% undetectable in working on Windows 7 and XP and, and Vista and whatever. Uh, back channels, runs on IRC, steals all kinds of information from Pigeon and, and Firefox, and it's got a nice GUI and it's easy to use. And this, this is from the actual post, this is not my stuff. So. Um, and I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I can use that too. I can use that in that, right? Because if you see how that works. Um, and I have the actual example in, in a second. Um, for, for this specific one, I, I can't show you exactly what we did because it's like for, for an old customer that was doing some stuff. Uh, but we had another chance, I mean, after we did that first time, I'm like, <laughs> that, that's kind of fun. Um, and not too long ago, everyone is familiar with uh, oh shit. Dark Comet, right? Yes? No? Awesome. So Dark Comet suddenly stopped, like a few months ago. No more versions, and they actually pulled off the website because Dark Coder was like, shit. The Syrians are using this to like attack their own people. It's like kind of sucks. Doesn't make me feel good. Drop the website. And I was like, shit's gonna happen now. Because people are gonna go like, I want dark comet, I want dark comet. I'm like, <laughs> okay, I can give you dark comet. I have the latest version because I, I still have it. What if I publish it in this forum? It's like, oh, here's the latest version of dark comet, blah 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 blah. The website is down. There you go but it's gonna be like on my terms. 
so here's what we did in, in the second instance, and this I can actually show you because it's kind of generic. It's Dark Comet. It's not like specific, whatever. Um, so this is Dark Comet uh, running. Everything's cool. This is a fresh, the latest version. If you want, I can give you one. Oh, really? Um, it's all cool. It's running. Oh, come on. Just go, go, go. And what we're doing is we're using the tools that are distributed with Dark Comet. In this, in this instance, uh, Celeste Binary, which basically takes two binaries or, or any number of files and puts them, glues them together, strings them together so they execute one after another. Uh, so what we're doing is we're taking like a simple, stupid interpreter shell, all right, uh, that we compiled for, uh, for Windows, and running it before running Dark Comet itself. We're updating the icon so it would look like Dark Comet. Um, and we're saving it as, as Dark Comet 2 or underscore or whatever it is. Uh, so it's Dark Comet in Dark Comet, or Dark Comet with Meterpreter, or whatever you want. You can actually build you know, the, the server of Dark Comet and bind it to the client, which is kind of awesome, because it's there anyway, <laughs> right? And we're, we have like the, the Meterpreter listener on, over there. We're running this version of Dark Comet, and Dark Comet pops up. Everything's fine. It's fully functional, operational, blah, 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 because it's dark carpet. Uh, but on the back end, we have a connection from the person who's using dark comet uh, to attack us. So all I have to do now is just, this is like a test. All I have to do, delete the original dark comet, rename mine to dark comet, repackage it, put it on the forum, and wait for shells. <laughs> Which is always fun. <laughs> Got it? Cool? Easy? It's like Interpreter 101, right? It's old, and it's old. Uh, the, the cool thing about it is like click, 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 click. You're owned. <laughs> and you own yourself. And you're never going to run an AV on this, right? It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's got a Trojan in it. <laughs> really? <laughs> Tell me something I don't know. It's like, <laughs> run it anyway. It's the people, it's the humans that you need to manipulate, not the technology. Uh, here's a, uh, another example, um, keylogger that, that we, we modified. And this one really goes deep. Uh, this is a cryptor, fudder, whatever you want to call it. This is basically taking all the shit that, you, that comes out of Dark Comet that, and is detected by everyone and encrypts it so that antiviruses won't be able to detect it. Right? And then they create like a funky binary that, that runs and everything is fine. And, and those things are, are really cool, right? because they, they actually work. <laughs> I know, antiviruses have been out there for like, what, 30 years, 20 years? Still didn't get this shit. Um, and you, can, you can buy it, you can download it, whatever it is. In this case, this, this dude was publishing this tool, and again, if, and this is another forum, that, that we're monitoring because our you know, threat communities were hanging out there and, and getting their, their, their mojo together, and um, this is a lie, all right? It wasn't 100% FUD. It actually triggered two or three antiviruses, some obscure ones and, and the usual, like, 100% false positive ones that you feed them calc and they're like, oh my god, virus. <coughs> so what we did here is we can download it, right? Uh, so we downloaded it, and modified it. We did a couple of things there. One is, first of all, fix it, because it wasn't 100% FUD. And we really want, I mean, you do the testing. And when you run this, you're like, oh, I'm going to run this on this, 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 and this, and V, not in virus total. Uh, and you know, if something pops up, I'm like, <laughs> crap, not going to use it. So we want people to use it, because, so we had to fix it. Uh, so that was, that was interesting. Uh, and the second part is, Yes, we're going to create some kind of fresh binary that someone's pr probably putting an executable, a, a Trojan in, or, or some kind of malware, uh, and it's going to be undetectable, right? Well, not if I control the way that it's created. So what I'm going to do is put my signature in it. It's going to be it better be fucking static. I don't care. No one's going to look into it and tune my defense systems 
to look for that signature. Finally, signature-based detection works, right? <laughs> I didn't think of it like before. So here's, here's a, uh, this, is, this really is, is like a generic example because we, we, I really couldn't show you exactly what we did there, especially not on the fudding part, but it's not rocket science, trust me. Um, so this is Rogue Cryptor um, that was actually used by, by someone else, but in, it's a different story. Uh, and we're crypting putty, all right? Um, so this is the crypted version. I run it. It works like charm. It's just binary different than putty itself because it's, it's different. This is the rigged one that we've modified, all right? And it works kind of the same. Um, what we're looking at here is the... Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oop, we passed it. Go down. There you go. <laughs> we designed it so that it would, once it creates the executable, we find a code cave. It's a section of the code that's like all nulls and whatever. And we just made it so it would leave a signature. In this case, I'm right here. Okay? This code inside of the, the binary is never going to run because there's, you know, it just doesn't get referenced. And if you want to go like super cool, just, just create a jump before it so it will like hop. Uh, so if, if something points to somewhere around it, like don't get executed. Uh, and again, this is how it looks like in memory. In, in the, when, you, when you look at the CPU thread, it's just lying there in some portion of the code. It's like, OK? Now, that should make it fairly easy to detect, correct? Because all I have to do now is go to snort and have a signature for this. I'm right here uh, on the binary. What we're doing here in, in, in terms of the demo, we're downloading or, or I'm just generating traffic, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm getting the, uh, the original cryptid, like proper cryptid, before I modified it uh, from, from like the vanilla version, and then I'm downloading the rigged version just so I have PCAPs of, of both of those things running through the wire. Um, I can skip this. And all right, so what I have here is my snort signature, right? Super simple. Don't need to be a, a reverser or anything like that. We're running the, the PCAPs. Blah, 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 on snort. This is the original, so nothing is, is popped up. So this, this, is, this is what would happen if I just used the cryptor that the dude published. Now, if I use my version of, of the cryptor, I get an alert. Simple. Right? That's cool, because now I know someone's sending this, you know, someone's using this tool against me, Something relevant from my IDS. I know we, we went through two IDS talks today. It can be useful for something. <laughs> Crazy. Um, and again, the, all, all we had to do at that point is just go back to the forum. And yes, we had that dude's like pat. Someone told us, or we guessed the, the, the password for the, the guy posting the tool. Uh, so all we had to do is go back to the post, change it, uh, upload it to a new media fire URL, change the URL, and everyone was downloading our shit. Um, but again, you, you've narrowed it down to a certain community that you know these are bad people. Okay, uh, so relevant, actionable intelligence. Again, I can't stress this hard enough. Get a lawyer. Um, but remember that law is also hackable because law was created by vulnerabilities, by humans. <laughs> they didn't cover everything or there's shitloads of loopholes. Um, you can get stuff done. Look at Microsoft. Microsoft has the best lawyers in the world, bar none. Um, their lawyers let them touch, modify millions of PCs, live PCs, that were infected with a uh, Brito lab, uh, Brito lab, yeah. On copyright infringement, <laughs> on trademark infringement, that was their clause that let them pay.
catch millions of systems and pop a message to the users and like, we cleaned up your shit. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, again, use it to your advantage. Find the lawyers that will let you do what you need to do to get proper defense. All right. Once you do that, again, you can throw in some more technology. The same SOC would probably be a major focus for you because you need to process all that data and, and figure out what to do with it. Um, there are tools like Kipo that you can use in terms of intel gathering. This, this is awesome. If you, again, don't use this if all your infrastructure is Microsoft because that's going to look weird when you have Windows, uh, like Linux servers and shells, right? But if you have some, some Unix machines, try to put honeypots that are relevant and have people logging into them and telling you basically all their secrets because what do you do when you get shell? Automatically start backdooring it, right? Where do you get the backdoors? You download them from your stash. <laughs> um, so you get all the new bleeding cool like backdoors and, and Linux stuff for free. <laughs> Right? And you get to fuck with people. If you watch this video for like a long time, it's like, this, this is a honeypot. There's nothing behind it. And, and when you start like to add users, it asks you questions and more questions. It's like, are you sure you want to do this? Yes. What is the name of the, it's like, I told you. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> then as you see people just going RM minus RF, enter. Minus, like, delete, erase, nothing works. It's just, it's all bullshit. Um, other tools like artillery. Again, you place them in strategic places, you get information about people trying to fuck with your infrastructure. It's easy. And since they're doing it to you, you can do things back to them to either shut them down or just fuck with them for, for fun and get more, more information, more intelligence. I'm going to skip through this because we're really running late. I, I know I don't care about time, but it's like, can't keep you here forever and we've got a party. Um, <laughs> This is basically a, a, an instance of, of uh, an organization that we worked wo with, uh, some financial organization. Uh, they suspected they, they're, they're having some breaches inside and someone's sifting data. So what we did is we created fake information um, that was relevant to what we're trying to investigate, put it in, in several places, and basically track down who's accessing it. Again, it's my information. I can do whatever I want with it. And if it's false and someone touches it and tries to fuck with it, dude, we got to talk. <laughs> and we identified it in, in the accounting. And someone touched it. So we looked at the internal user. We talked to the user. We inspected the PC. The user was kind of OK. Like they're accountants. What do you expect? Um, and we found the Trojan on the PC that was not detected by any antivirus. Guess what? <laughs> Big surprise. Um, did some forensics, incident response, tracked it down to, uh, I mean, keep the communication going. Never just, oh, Trojan, delete. Nope, useless, useless. You're going to get owned again. Uh, tracked the, the command control server to somewhere around here and actually track the bad guys because, again, if you keep the communication open and you keep feeding the information, you can actually get to the point where you get human interaction, not just technology, blip, 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 IP address, great, some Russian bulletproof hosting. Pfft, good luck with that. Uh, get the interaction so you can actually get to the people running the bad things. A few last notes. Play nice with others. You're not alone out there. Look at you guys. We're all here. We all deal with the same shit. This is what we're here for, to talk to each other and understand how do you solve your shit. Oh, this is how I solve my shit. It's like, <laughs> great idea. Uh, and there are places that are designed to do just that, right? Certs, governments will help you a lot of times, peers, okay? And yes, competitors, we talked about it. This is my Zen slide. Um, there's no, again, you cannot throw money at the problem and expect it to be solved, all right? Money, technology, it doesn't work. You need to really figure out things holistically <laughs> from a business perspective and then try to fix it. Few, two calls for actions. If you're a vendor, get your shit done. All right? Stop pushing me antiviruses and patches and IDSs that don't work. Well, they work after I play with them uh, for my purposes. Start building technology that fits what I need as a defender, as a business. Again, I'm not protecting technology. I'm protecting a business. 
deal with data, right? Loosely typed. I just want to throw all the data that I have into one bucket, right? Magic bucket, and have something come out of it that says, here's a map of everything that's going on. And I can drill down and have like fancy shit. Build it, please. All right? All I have right now is like a bunch of scripts that are like processing stuff and it's broken. Uh, if you're a defender, own your data. All right? This is your home advantage. It's like home field advantage. I'll, this is my turf. I can do whatever kind of funky shit I want on this turf because it's mine. If you step into the hole, pff, your problem. Shouldn't have stepped there. It says no trespassing on, on, the, on the sign out there. Gather intelligence. Right? It's not a bad word. It's not about, again, it's not playing against the rules. There are no rules. It's not fair. So get intelligence on who's out there to get you so you can know, right, we got to get some stuff together. Focus on the assets. Don't just go carpet bombing. AV everywhere. Firewalls, IDSs, and appliances with blinking lights. No. F what am I trying to protect? Right? Focus there. You'll have way more money after that to deal with the actual problems along the way, right? Because now you're focused on identifying what are the processes that are touching that asset. And take the initiative. Again, get out of that defensive kind of mentality of let's wait for the logs to pop up and say we're on. Get proactive. Do something with your time instead of just scrolling through logs of firewalls. That's all I have for you. If you have any questions, bring them up.